differential equations are extremely important for us. We have to solve them all the time in engineering. You can sometimes try to use power shares to solve them, as you will see in this video. We'll do two examples. First, we try to solve y prime equals y, it says initial condition y0 equals 1. And we are looking for y of x, and we want to try a power share solution. That means that we try a power series, y equals sum n from 0 to infinity, cn times x to the power n, and our aim is to find all those coefficients cn. So if we write down the first few, we get c0 plus c times one, c1 times x plus c2 times x squared, plus c3 times x cubed, and so on, and so on. So we're looking for a solution of this form. Now, we can already determine c0 because we have our initial condition, y0 equals 1. So we, if we plug in x equals 0, then all those terms here cancel out, and we get y equals c0 equals 1, so c0 should be equal to 1. So found the first coefficient onto the others. So we have our differential equation y prime equals y, and our power series, our function, has to satisfy this differential equation. So we compute y prime and then we plug it into the differential equation. So we have y, so our y prime uses c1 plus 2 times c2 times x plus 3 times c3 times x squared, and so on, and so on. And then we plug that into the differential equation. So that means that this y prime has to be equal to the idx x equals y, so it has to be equal to y. Now we have a power series in y, has to be equal to another power series, and two power series are equal if all the uh, coefficients in front of the uh, powers x to the power 0, x to the power 1, x to the power 2, x to the power 3, they have to be equal on the left and the right hand side. So let's start with the x to the power 0. So we have a c1 times x to the power 0 over here has to be equal to c0 times x to the power 0, so c1 has to be equal to c0. We know c0 equals 1, so c1 also equals 1. Then we compare coefficients of x to the power 1. Here we have 2 times c2 times x to the power 1, and here we have c1 times x to the power 1, so 2 times c2 has to be equal to c1. So we can compute c2, c2 equals 1 half. And in this way we can continue, compute all the coefficients, so we we'll get x to the power 2. Here we have 3 times c3 times x to the power 2 has to be equal to uh, c2 times x to the power 2, so 3 times c3 has to be equal to c2, or c3 equals 1 over 6. I can recognize the pattern, in principle you will have to go on and go on, but here you can recognize the pattern cn equals 1 over n factorial, which means that you have your full solution as a power series, y of x equals sum n from 0 to infinity, x to the power n divided by n factorial, and of course you recognize this as the Taylor series of the exponential function. Yeah, that makes sense of course, because the solution of this differential equation is the exponential function. On to the next example, almost the same, we only added the square over here. So we follow the same strategy, we <coughs> have the same y, and now we have y prime equals y squared, so we need to compute y prime and y squared, and they have to be equal. So y prime is easy, it's just the differentiation. y squared is a bit annoying, because that's a power series, y times another power series, y, so a product of two power series, and that's uh, annoying, because they both have infinitely many terms. So here we have it, y prime. Uh, so we have to work out the brackets, and we'll do it up till uh, terms of x squared. We won't go any further. Uh, so we have start with the 1, and that yields uh, uh, 1 plus c1 times x plus 1 times c2, so those terms over here, plus terms of order x cubed, x to the power 4, etc., which is denoted like this. Then we take the second term, the c1 times x, times 1 yields uh, c1 times x, c1 times x times c1 times x yields c1 squared times x squared, and uh, c1 uh, times x times this one, c2 times x squared, yields the x cubed term, so that goes in the order x cubed, so nothing more from that one. And we continue, c2 times x squared yields the c2 times x squared, plus again from this one, order x cubed, and if you would continue over here, you also get order x cubed, you only get higher order terms. So there we have our uh, y squared. You see already that even though we don't go to a really high order, it's already kind of annoying to 
to compute all those terms. But now we can compare. Uh, we have our y, y prime has to be equal to y squared. So we compare again x to the power 0 term. C1 has to be equal to 1. So C1 equals 1. Uh, x to the power 1 term. So 2 times C2 times x has to be equal to C1 times x plus C1 times x. So 2 times C2 equals 2 times C1, or C2 equals 1 as well. Then the x squared terms, 3 times C3 has to be equal to, here we have a C2, and here we have another C2, and here we have a C1 times squared. So 3 times C3 has to be equal to C1 squared plus 2 times C2. So 3 times C3 equals 1 plus 2 equals 3. So 3, 3 equals 1 as well. And now we have computed the first few terms. Uh, the uh, y equals 1 plus x plus x squared. If you, if you continue, you'll see that the next one is x cubed. Uh, but well, you can, can go on for some time, but not infinitely often. So well, what do you know about convergence here? Well, not much. If you, you, can, uh, you, if you don't know the coefficients, so it probably will go work all right for some time but you don't know exactly how far. And if you solve this equation analytically, you see y equals 1 over 1 minus x. So you see the function blows up for x equals 1. So this works fine up to x equals 1, but you cannot see it from this expression. You cannot see it if you have only the first few terms. And that is the danger of this method. Because, well, it may work very well for some values of x, but you don't have really control, you cannot check for how many values of x, you just can hope it works, all right, unless you have the exp expression of Cn. So this power series method for solving differential equations uh, can work really nicely, but you have to be careful, you really have to know what you're doing.